What's up YouTube, Capital G here, re-uploading this video. And the last one, I accidentally had mass charge instead of mass change. I know that it was mass change, but I typed in mass C and uh, accidentally clicked charge instead of change. But anyways, so this is Rainbow Neos and it actually got fourth place in an event over in Japan, over in the OCG. People are wondering probably how big was the event because, you know, if you get like fourth place out of five people, then that doesn't really count. It was 50, it was 52 people, but uh, I know that sounds kind of low, but I mean, come on, the UDS that they had in Los Angeles, like, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, that was only like 70 people. So it's not like, you know, the be all end all is the event number. It kind of, I mean, to be honest, it kind of matters the, the, the quality of the, uh, of the players involved. Now, this is a deck focused around, to me, uh, it looks like OT King. And I don't think that this deck translates into the TCG for anybody who's asking, can I play this? I mean, yeah, hypothetically, you could play a variant. I just don't think it would be nearly as successful and it wouldn't, it wouldn't run as fluently or as it did in the OCG, because uh, there, there's like too many cards that you would have to adjust because of the differences between the OCG and the, the TCG ban list. But this is something that isn't Draco Pals or Burning Abyss. And for the most part, that's all it's been in Japan for like the last couple of months. So I'm like, oh my God, finally something else to talk about. A lot of this deck has to do with summoning this card right here, Rainbow Neos. Came out in Phantom Darkness. It was the Ghost Rare Phantom Darkness. I didn't understand why it was considering it's Phantom Darkness and Rainbow Neos is a light card. It makes even less sense now that I think about it. Um, this They could have easily put this in like Strike of Neos. That would have made a lot more sense. They were both GX packs. But regardless, uh, Rainbow Neos is an incredibly powerful card. It's just always been like ridiculously impossible to summon because you have to play like Rainbow Dragon. Then you have to, or you could play Rainbow Dark Dragon, which was the newer card released in phantom darkness but like neither one of those were optimal they weren't really like searchable i mean you could even have like other things that could try and like copy the name but even still it was like it really wasn't that easy to get to but um rainbow neos itself is still a really powerful card i mean it's 4500 attack it's over halfway to an OTK by itself. And the first effect is the major effect you're going to be using. Send one monster you control to the graveyard. Shuffle all monsters your opponent controls into their deck. I mean, this is non-targeting. It gets rid of monsters pretty much without triggering them. The second effect is pretty much the same thing. Just against back row, you send a spell and trap you control to the grave. And then you get to spin all of their back row. But the thing is, in the OCG, it's not nearly as important to blow up back row. I mean, yes, they do have Solemn Strike like we do. But in the OCG, they have Feather Dusters. So, like, no one loads up. It's not like in the TCG where, you know, you, like, load up on back row like Cosmos do. They don't really do that in the OCG, not because, or not just because they don't have Cosmos as an archetype, but because... Feather Duster is just like always looming over you. Feather Duster can just destroy you and you know pretty much you lose from that point. Now he ran MSTs and Typhoons in addition to that. I'm thinking that Twin Twister wasn't as optimal in this deck because again, Monarchs and Draco Pals and like the OC, they don't really run that much back row. You know, like if you look at TCG Draco Pals, what do they run? Bottomless and Treacherous and like that's it. So this is probably just for hitting scales, just for hitting cards like Domain that would stop you from being able to go into your play domain would obviously be a bitch um if you happen to be forced to go first you still could easily go for dark law plus maybe like a typhoon which acts as an mst which can hit pendulum scales in case your opponent is playing the draco pals or something like that you know the two book of moons are the only real defensive cards in here i guess you know call to Honda could kind of be seen as a pseudo defensive card i don't really look at call to Honda as a defensive card it's more of like an offensive card obviously in this deck it can be used to trigger stratos as like an uh, just a, a mst to be honest or you know there's a lot of synergy with um shadow mist as well but book of moon is just probably for those things like you know if you happen to play like a hero match putting your opponent's dark law face down putting Rafflesia face down putting um evil swarm nightmare face down like any of the problematic cards that you know see play i don't think they really do much of naturia beast and the ocg but you guys know like the little stunny guys obviously no more cyber dragon infinity and i don't really think that like abyss dweller would hurt this that because the only thing that really triggers in the graveyard is this now some of the reasons why I say this deck doesn't really transfer 
as well to the OCG or from the OCG to the TCG is uh, Monster Reborn versus Soul Charge. Usually, when you see Monster Reborn, you could swap it out with Soul Charge um, in the in the in the uh, TCG. But the problem is, Monster Reborn is is more of a win. Let's win right here and now type of card. Soul Charge is obviously a card with a much higher ceiling. Soul Charge can get back five monsters. Monster Reborn can only get back one. So the amount of advantage you can get with Soul Charge is way way higher. But in this deck where you're trying to kill your opponent right then and there, you know, step one. Some and rainbow neo step two kill they ass like you just want to be able to monster born you know something like a neos alias or stratos like just a, a beater to get to that eight thousand damage um chaos emperor dragon being illegal in the ocg even if it is errated is still something that is it's something that you have to respect especially considering it's freaking searchable like i did not even realize that with this card the melody uh the melody of the awakening dragon uh those stats actually perfectly line up with chaos emperor dragon so not only can you search um what's it called no 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 in fact only thing you can search uh I, no 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 okay for some for some reason i was thinking it had to be three thousand not only can you search both of the rainbow dragons but then you can search this guy as well so you should always hypothetically have access to this and considering the rainbow dragons are light and dark plus shadow mist is dark and neil's aliases are light you should have enough of them in the graveyard to consist drop this card and when you do some simple math like you know this guy is 4500 this is 3000 i mean that's 7500 you only need one more attack to basically game your opponent that next attack can come from monster or born it can come from mass change it can come from you know any other way outside of like call to hana because you can't use that turn one now one thing that's always been frustrating to me is the fact that rainbow neos is not an elemental hero if this card would have been an e-hero it's play, it definitely would have saw play during the 5Ds era. Maybe not in the GX era, but definitely when like people were playing Miracle Heroes because then you would have been able to use Miracle Fusion on it. And it, maybe this would have been even nuts. But imagine if you made Rainbow Neos attack for 45 and then you like mass changed it into like uh, i believe it's koga right like <laughs> that would be actually really 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 powerful like that'd be a lot of battle damage you know just in like a couple of cards that you were using so this is an interesting deck it's clearly like supposed to be uh more or less kind of like a mermail type deck a glass cannon you're going second you're trying to blow up your opponent's board with mass removal dark hole and feather duster they don't have regeki but dark hole and regeki do the same exact thing in this deck like if you're going second dark hole and regeki basically the same card don't activate it while you have cards on the field obviously um and you basically just want to OTK your opponent. If you're forced to go first in this deck, I didn't include this side deck. It's really not that relevant, you know, other than, I guess, like specific matchups or whatever. If you're going first with this deck, then you can simply fall back on, okay, I'm going to make my Dark Law. I'm going to set a Book of Moon. I'm going to set maybe an MST or a Typhoon for those Pendulum Scales. And maybe like a Call of the Haunted, you know, Dark Law plus like Book of Moon can still be kind of difficult. And again, this deck doesn't have to worry about Cosmos. Like, oh my God, how am I going to out Dark Destroy? Because there are no Cosmos in the OC. CG. most of which you're going to be playing against is like burning abyss which i mean struggle against you know a card like dark law and draco pals where that's fine if they make their you know their super strong turn one field but if you dark hold them and then just like kill them then you know all the cards that they have in their hand all the advantage that they may have during their next turn and that they may subsequently get from pendulum summoning that next turn, like it's all irrelevant because they're dead there's no more damage juggler so like actually otk's kind of more viable in the tcg and the ocg now than you know they've been in a long time which is why you see decks like monarch explosion seeing play because there's no damage juggler if damage juggler was legal decks like this and atlantean like you wouldn't really see them being played at all but this is just something interesting that i wanted to give to you guys again my apologies because people got really upset they were like oh my god what's up with mass charge no mass change it was it was mass change guys he, he plays what's it called he does play shadow miss it's limited in the ocg but like in a deck like this where you play stratos and three hero lives and you should be able to get the stratos because you've got rota and three he calls like i'm not even sure you really need three sh like i don't think i'd even run three three shadow miss maybe like two but in this build specifically i don't think i'd, I'd even run three shadow miss because stratos should always be able to get you shadow mist or e-call or rota like you should always have that card and you can obviously pitch shadow mist for this and then you could still search like a bubble man or neos or something like that so anyways thank you guys for watching as always